Hi, everyone, and welcome to Harley Davidson Podcast. My name is Matt Gardipi, and today we're talking with Jake Hines, owner and operator of Prism Supply Company and co creator of The Congregation Show. Jake, thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. So, you're in North Carolina right now, right? That's correct. Yep. So, I'm actually uh, working in, from a buddy's studio right now because uh, it's nice and quiet here. But yes, our shop is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. What, uh, what have you guys been doing to keep busy during this whole thing? As far as Prism goes as a business, we sell parts, um, aftermarket parts to the home builder. So uh, fortunately for us, we've been busy in this time because the reason I think that is, is a lot of people are home right now um, working, wrenching on their own bikes, and that's keeping us busy. Right on, man. Pretty stoked to have you on the podcast. Um, We talk on the phone all the time, right? Um, And we're usually talking about the congregation show and work stuff. And obviously, there's always jokes and some chopper nonsense mixed in there. Um, but I'm kind of excited because, you know, me and you are buddies, but I want to do a little deeper dive and uh, kind of see how you caught the two wheeled fever. Yeah. So how did you uh, get into motorcycles? And when did that happen? Like, when did that enter into your life? Yeah. So first, to, to answer that question shortly, and then I'll, I'll tell a story about this. Um, I, I was really raised into it, um, kind of born into it, grew up riding dirt bikes, there was never a time where I wasn't on two wheels from the time I was three till now I'm, I'm 30 or 31. How old am I? I? I was kind of, kind of born into it, but my first memory is actually of my brother, Zach. So he, my brother, Zach co-owns prison with me. And, uh, my first memory is of him. My dad came home from the flea market one Saturday morning. And, uh, this is when flea markets were still a thing and you could go to the flea market instead of a swap meet and find good deals on motorcycles. So he came home with this mini bike and, um, there wasn't much teaching involved in, in the moment. It was more of like, Oh, you just twist the throttle and go. Uh, I remember my brother Zach getting on the bike and there was a tree, probably 200 feet, a big, big Oak tree, uh, 200 feet away from him. And of course he just hits the throttle. Um, I'm, I'm three at the time. So he's four and a half ish, five maybe. And, uh, goes right into the tree and I can remember the front wheel actually like riding up the tree and then him falling straight on his back. So that, so that's my first memory of motorcycles. And then after that, I was like, Oh wow, this is cool. This, this is a dangerous thing. I remember like thinking that at three years old and I was like, I can't wait to do this. So anyway, um, my dad taught me how to ride with a a little bit more instruction. I, I hope, I guess, uh, at three years old, I rode no training wheels could uh, ride a dirt bike, shift gears on a dirt bike. These were dirt bikes with with no clutches at the time. Yeah, so started riding at three years old. Where did you uh, Where did you grow up? I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, and and still to this day, I love it. This is my home. Um, I travel a decent amount for work, and I'm always thankful to come back to Charlotte, North Carolina. Right on, man. I think I told you this last time we hung out, but I lived in. Uh, well, I was an uh, army kid, right? So Fort Bragg in Charlotte and all that, like till I was six or seven. Well, one of these, one of these days, one of these days I'll get you back down here. Oh, you're darn right. Hopefully for the new, the new show, man, I'm going to try to make it out for the show this year. (laughs) Obviously I kind of got a little bit of the backstory on how you guys started prism supply when we hung out in Milwaukee last time. I believe there was a college degree involved, some cafe racer parts in making a decision to go full time with it. I was working a full time job and this kind of goes back to the story I was just telling about Zach and I building a bike. Zach was working a full time job and so I was a machinist at the time actually a tool and die maker. But I worked in a machine shop and I could make any part that I wanted to. Uh, I was let's say 19 years old maybe and Zach was 21. So when we had the idea about And sorry, Zach was working in fabrication. He worked uh, for a NASCAR team and and actually still does at the time doing doing really high end fabrication. So he was very, very talented. And to brag about Zach a little bit, he's still probably the most talented fabricator that I know. But um, regardless of that, so we both were working full time jobs and started building this this CB350 that I was telling you about. Started making our own parts for it, and at the time I was posting it on this online forum. I was posting the clip-on handlebars that we were making. I was posting the taillight that I made for the bike. We were posting the aluminum gas tank that Zach fabricated from scratch. We were posting the aluminum seat cowl that Zach fabricated from scratch. We were posting all this stuff. 
we got a lot of positive response just from random people on the forum. And they said, hey, can I buy this set of handlebars or can I buy that taillight? So sure enough, what did we do? We started ma- manufacturing these um, on the side at our full-time jobs. You can imagine from there, eventually we we launched a website, started making a, a couple more parts. We had a t-shirt on our website. And it was actually Prism, Motor- Prism Motorcycles at the time. Now it's Prism Supply, but still the same started making these parts, eventually like started selling one or two parts a month. Um, Just with the idea of, you know what, this is going to help fund our hobby. It's it's really cool. Even if it doesn't fund our hobby, it's really cool that random people have ran across our parts and and just want to buy something from us. Um, They like something that we've made enough to run it on their own personal project. For us, that like was enough to drive us and enough to keep us going. So launch the website, things slowly start to grow. We went from selling one to two taillights a, a month to three or four taillights a month, you know, as, as any business organically grows. And then <laughs> I remember the company that I was working for at the time, they came up to me and said, Hey, like, you know, you can't be making money on our own equipment. Like we're fine with you doing your own projects. And I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I understand that. And I was using their equipment almost every day at the time to, I was staying late at work, um, manufacturing these, these parts and so eventually they said that, and that was the best thing that anybody told me to, to start my own business. So you know what that forced us to do was to save money. So we saved money, bought our own equipment. We put it in the garage at Zach's house. Eventually things started taking off a bit more. I wanted to go back to school. I always wanted to go back to school to get my mechanical engineering degree. So at the time, kind of decided, you know what, I could probably do this part-time. I can man- I can manufacture some parts on my own, regardless if they're motorcycle parts or just any job shop related part uh, to help pay for my school and for me to just get by. Get married sometime in that. So as you can imagine, I, as you can imagine, I have a lot going on and then graduate school. And at this time, Prism has, it has taken off. And this is roughly 2016, 2017. So I'm having the conversation with my wife. I actually get offered a job right out of school. That's was like three times more than I could ever make doing prism. And so I'm talking to my wife about it. I'm like, I just don't know what to do. Like the money sounds nice. We, we, we hustled for me to get through school so that we can make money. And and my wife said to me, Jake, you haven't done this from day one for the money. Like why, why, why do that now? Like do what you love. And so that was like a big shift for me in my mindset. That was the day that I decided to do prism full time. Dude, that's awesome. It's such a good like bootstrap, getting it done, building it up from nothing type of story. I love hearing that stuff. Man. So you have prison supply going. You've decided to go full time with it. At what point do you does Dean, your partner in crime, come into the mix? And, and what made you guys decide to try to put on your own motorcycle show? At the time, prison was basically nothing. And so I start telling him about my business and what I want to do and what we work on and all that. And from that point on, we, we really hit it off and just connected and uh, stayed friends throughout the years. So fast forward two or three years, I'm into Harley Davidson's at the time, at this time, Dean's like, Hey man, it looks like you guys are doing a really cool thing out in Charlotte. It it seems like the scene's kind of exploding. Have you thought about doing and doing any sort of event? And I was like, actually, I have. I'd like to do something. What if we did a What if we did a Dice magazine release party here in Charlotte? And he's like, Yeah, I love that. So we reached out to a local bar, and we just said, Let's just do it at the bar. Let's have live music there. Uh, we can rent the bar out. We can put bikes inside. We can put bikes in the alleyway. But let's let's choose these bikes. Like, what bikes go out there, and kind of make it more of a curated show. So we ended up putting this release party on slash bike show. It, and at the time, it didn't have a, a name other than issue such and such. I can't remember what it was. Uh, Dice issue such and such release party. We have this event and have, I don't know, man, 800 people, a thousand people show up. Really, really crazy. The bar telling us this is the busiest night they've had in 10 years. And we're like, wow, like we have something. And then, so I remember the next day, Tina and I just kind of like talking about how awesome it was. Like the local community came out the community that we're building and all this. And he, I think he had the idea of like, what if we do something bigger? Like, is there something, something more that we can do here? So, so that there's more of a, there's a, we have a larger reach on uh, bringing the community together. And I was like, dude, that would be awesome. So fast forward six months, I'm, I'm looking at property for Prism uh, to lease a, to lease a shop space. 
one of my friends calls me and says, Hey, I have this potential shop space if, if you want to come look at it. And so the next day I go and I look at the shop space, fall in love with the shop, still our current shop. And this was three years ago. The owner of the property says, Oh, here's a cool building that you, you might be, you might want to see. It used to be an old Ford factory. And I was like, uh, yeah, I want to see that. And so we walk in to this building and the first thing I see are individual like wooden planks on the floor, basically like two by fours cut on end. So they're three or four inches deep placed on end across the entire floor. So I walk in and it just has like this old smell of the building. I see the floor. I see all the old windows. I see the skylights and I'm like, wow, this place is incredible. Then he shows me pictures of Ford actually manufacturing in this building in the 1920s and 1930s. And then in the 1940s, the government bought it to manufacture missiles. And so he's just telling me this whole story. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, we have to have an event here. This is the spot where we're going to have an event. I think I was more excited about uh, about having the event there than I was about the shop space. And so I, I leave, like immediately leave and I call Dean and I say, dude, I'm about to blow your mind. I found the perfect venue. I haven't ever seen a, a better venue and you can't dream of a better venue. And um, he goes, what? And I said, just like stay on the phone. I'm going to send you a picture. And I sent him a picture and he lost his mind. He was like, dude, we have to do an event here. And so we were the, we were actually the very first people to do an event at this space at Camp North End. Thankfully, they allowed us and it, it happened. So that's kind of how Congregation Year One was born. So 2020 um, got a little messed up. Obviously, we all know that. With that, you guys had to move your dates for the congregation show. So what are the new dates for the show right now? The congregation show itself is only on the 24th, but we'll have pre-parties, after parties, et cetera. October 23rd through 25th are the new dates for congregation this year. I guess that kind of leads into like, I was having a conversation um, about what we were going to do. All these events were getting moved, postponed, canceled. And I was talking to another uh, coworker of mine and it just so happened they, they hit me up um, and were like, hey man, we want you on this meeting. And they presented this really rad idea for what we're calling the no show. And essentially it was, we saw this need to have something because of, you know, we're missing out on all these shows that usually would have already happened this like first half of the year. Um, and I think we're all just kind of fiending for those rad bikes and, and that, that atmosphere and the music and the art and all that stuff. Right. So they had this great idea um, to put on a digital show. Obviously it made sense for us to reach out to partners like you guys and see if you wanted to be a part of it and maybe kind of give us direction on, you know, who you had for builders or who might have been affected um, by this and then uh, try to support them in the community by putting on this show. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on like the show itself when we kind of presented it to you and uh, what your thoughts are on like the idea or the concept of it. Yeah. So I remember uh, sitting in my office and you called me and you said, Hey man, we have this idea to, to do this virtual show and, and you, and I could tell, I could, I could hear the passion coming from you when you were telling me about it. And I was, and immediately my thought was, this is going to be cool. Like I can feel some passion behind it. Um, so from the, from the get go, I remember hanging up the phone. I remember telling uh, Ben who, who works for congregation as well as prism and, and calling Dean immediately after and just saying, Hey dude, Harley has this cool idea for this no show. Um, it's going to be a virtual show. The idea is um, for, us to pick a set amount of builders born free to pick a set amount of builders and mama tried to pick a set, a set amount of builders. And, um, we, we launched this virtual show with some of our favorite builders or, uh, builders that have cool stories and, uh, everybody, everybody loved it from the beginning. So, so we are all in and, and more than stoked to do it. Yeah. It was just really rad. Like how this is all kind of, um, coming together as far as just bringing the community, shedding some light on builders and then using this platform that Harley has. Um, you know, we've never done that. We've done it to an extent, but we've never put such a focus on this, uh, this segment of the motorcycle scene. Um, and I think we're going to reach a lot of new people and new eyeballs with it. And I think it's, it's critical that we continue to push new facets of the motorcycle world on, on everybody. I got one last question for you. What does riding mean to you? And what do you love most about riding? Jeez, Matt, it's so deep. Um, <laughs> oh man, what does it mean to me? So I love the adventure part of it. I love the relaxation part of it. I love the meditation part of it. Um, it's it's a time for me to, to get in my head. I purposely don't wear headphones where I, when I'm riding. 
um, because I, I like to hear all the mechanical noises. I like to, I like all of my senses coming alive in a sense. So for me, it's relaxing, but I would say more important than that for me, motorcycles and, and the community and motorcycle riding, what that means to me is, is friendship and brotherhood. My, my life is, has been found on, on this and honestly, Harley Davidson's too specifically, but, um, all my friends are into motorcycles. All my coworkers are into motorcycles. Um, I get to do it for a living. Like it's just, it's just my entire life. It, it really, I know it sounds cliche, but it's, it really is just a lifestyle for me. And it's, it's my passion and it's what I love. <laughs>